uterus has. Um, I'm a sex therapist, so I can talk about these things. Yeah, really please, easily. please, please. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, I the, came from a uterus. Okay. So it's all oh, good. Yeah, you've been yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've right. been there. <laughs> so. Awesome. So my name is Ty. Hey, so nice to meet you. So like I said, I have a hobby. I talk to people about the things that they strongly believe are true or things that they're really strongly motivated by. Mm -hmm. Is there anything like that for you? And you want to talk about it for a short while? There are a lot of things. That I think oh my god. <laughs> what do you think is the most important thing? Like something that you're really, really confident about. So um, I think usually I would answer that question differently, but because of where I am right now, mm. uh, which is eight months pregnant. Oh my gosh. Um, I have to put all of my belief and my motivation behind my training that I'm doing for childbirth. Okay, okay. That's your number one priority it's right now. It's number one, yeah. So I'm taking hours every day to do different practices, listen to different tracks because I'm doing yeah. a hypnosis-based Right. This is insanely awesome. Cool. I don't even know how to wrap my head around this because it's never been something that I thought about. But yeah. have you thought about, has, is this, now that you're going through it, is this your first time going through it? Yes. Is it, it what you expected it to be like growing up? Because I never had to consider so what like, pregnancy was like. Right. So that's like one of the first things we talked about was what is the message that you received in, about what childbirth has to be like. Yeah. And so yeah. You know, growing up, our story was of my dad throwing ice chips to my mom from the corner of the room while she's screaming, like, I'm going to kill you, and her head spinning around, and everybody's full of hate and screaming and flipping and out. And that told you the story of pregnancy? Right. And what? so I'm like, <laughs> right, right. Or, you know, you hear, like, parents will be like, um, oh, 14 hours of labor, and you can't sass me because I went through all this stuff to birth you. I've heard that. Right. right. That's, so, that's the typical black story. At or, least. I've heard my entire, yeah, yes. so, like, um... Or, you know, you watch movies like Knocked Up, and yeah. Katherine Heigl is screaming like a banshee. Yeah. And so we learn it. that's what's ingrained. There could also be the story that you get from, like, say, uh, like the biblical telling of, like, the story, like, a painful bird. Oh, right, yes. Could that also scare you? Because I probably yeah. hear that story, and I'm like, eh, let's get to the part where, you know, David beats Goliath. That was right. awesome, right? Right, right, First right. person shot. Yes, right. way better. But... What prepares you? What's the closest thing that's prepared you for what you're actually going through right now? So I'm taking classes. Um, we go to class every Saturday. And the whole idea behind what we're doing is called Hypno Babies. And the whole idea is, A, you have to unlearn what you were taught initially. Interesting. Because... If you go into anything with fear, you're mm. not going to do your best. You have to drop your assumptions. Right. Okay. And you have to relearn what birth can be. So now, on my Instagram feed, because I follow these different hashtags, it's like, uh -huh. sunset, dog, cake, vagina. <laughs> and it's like, you're scrolling through, and I'm seeing videos every single day of women who are quietly, peacefully, powerfully giving birth unmedicated in tubs or in their homes or wherever they need to be. Mm. And... I'm trying to reteach my brain that this is what birth looks like. I see. This process of a woman being very powerful mm. and strong and, you know, letting out noises if she needs to, but not panicking, right. not freaking out. Not like how it is in the movies or anything. Exactly. Like yeah, I don't need to sell a script here. So I'm relearning yeah. how to do that, as well as learning how to completely relax as much of my body as I can um, so that I'm not fighting my own body to give birth. Mm. The uterus has, um, I'm a sex therapist, so I can talk about these things. Yeah, really please, please, please. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I came from a uterus. It's okay. all, it's oh, all good. Great. you've been yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> so, they, uh, the muscle fibers on the inside mm -hmm. go this way. The okay. muscle fibers on the outside go this way, and okay. those two muscle fibers will respond differently to different hormones. So, when you are in your birthing time, mm -hmm. the muscle fibers that go this way are pulling the uterus like this and pushing the baby out. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now, what's left over inside of us is these muscle fibers that respond to adrenaline, mm. fight or flight. Mm. So once you go into fight or flight, they squeeze up. Because if you're in a cave, and you're giving birth, mm. and a lion is coming, you gotta get out of there. Are you saying then that there's a potential that 
some of the things that you've seen that have given you like these poor impressions what pregnancy is like may stimulate your biochemistry to the point where you're triggering yes. the hormones that are causing your That's uterus to act up. Absolutely right. And that was the first time I've ever said a sentence like that in my entire life. <laughs> right. But you totally <laughs> you get it, right? Well. It yeah. totally makes sense. Right. So if you're freaking out and if you're in fight or flight, right. your body is closing up and then... It complicates the pregnancy. That's exactly right. All right. I'm going to ask some weird questions. Do it. Oh, you mean street musicians? Is there, has this been like reliably demonstrated? Do we have like, do you have like yeah. any examples where like this is actually shown that this is the case? Yeah. What so are Hypno some of those Babies things? has been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of women use this really successfully to have unmedicated births. And the percentages of women who do this, um, they find that the chance of having to get medical intervention during your birth is way down. The chance of having to get a cesarean is way down mm. because everything is more peaceful and calm and you're working with your body. Um, but beyond just childbirthing, some people can't have opioids. Some mm. people can't have they don't react anesthesia. Well. Yeah, stuff or, like you that, know, yeah. because of an addictive past or whatever sure. it is. Yeah. So if you can help your body bypass or mute or kind of alleviate some pain naturally mm. through deep hypnosis, which is kind of like meditation, mm -hmm. um, where You're you are learning how, to right, right. learning how to really go through and calm everything, then you can get a lot done without medical intervention. So some people have gone on with a knife. Is it worthwhile to have a backup plan? Like yes. So we have what we call it, um, a lot of people will make a birth plan. Uh, we're calling it a birth preference sheet. Okay. Right. These okay. are the preferences that I would like to have, but part you'll, you'll of... You'll try it out this way. Yes. And if there's, if it gets pushed cub, you'll right. say, hey, time to this step up I'll on the do. next plan. But I have my preferences listed up. Exactly. It doesn't sound like you're absolutely confident about hypno babies. Would you say that's accurate? No. That's... I like to be always just a little questioning of a little everything. Yeah. So what it is is I'm absolutely confident in the brain's ability to calm the body and for a woman you might see to, with a little to light with her body. Hmm. I am not absolutely confident that... Um, Man, what do you mean by that? Can you feel <laughs> asking? Sure. You're absolutely confident about the, the brain's ability to calm down. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're... So, okay. Walk me through it. Give me okay, some Okay, yeah, great. So uh, the easiest one, um, if you are thinking about someone that you are uh, really sexually attracted to. Okay. And then you keep going into that fantasy in your mind. Okay. Um, a healthy male body will often respond to those thoughts with an erection. Okay. Right. So that's your body reacting, having a physical reaction to thoughts. Okay, so uh, if you're sitting there and you're thinking about all of the scariest shit that you can think of, right? Really scary stuff. And your eyes are closed and you're sitting in a room and you're home, totally safe. But if you keep thinking about scary stuff... You can get scared. Your heart rate increases, your adrenaline... Your brain gives your body adrenaline. Even though there's no real threat, you start to freak out and your fight or flight is engaged and your body responds to fear. Okay. Sounds like we can easily test that our brains can, totally. when I say our brains, I mean that we can make ourselves feel certain ways based on right. the way we can, to an extent, choose how we react to things. Right. And so what it is, is it's not going to be like, you know, if somebody has never heard of this, you can't go into a labor room and be like, but if you just calm down, yeah. it'll be fine. So there are limits then, aren't right. there? Right. This is a six-week course where every single day I'm listening to positive affirmations and I'm practicing the techniques for an extended period of time every single day. I'm just genuinely curious. What do they sound like? Um, so some of the positive... Is it like headphones on the baby or is it headphones on you? Or is that what I play them on my phone. Okay. Um, and I sit in different areas of the house in different positions So because I don't know what I'm gonna, what position I'm going to want to be in in my birthing time. Sure. Um, but a lot of the positive affirmations are uh, my body and I work in harmony. Mm. My baby knows how to be born. Okay. Um... I will accept anything that my birthing time brings me, which is part of it. So that's that's where I was coming from when I was saying earlier, like, this is how I want to do it. But if the baby's umbilical cord is wrapped around their neck and we have to do a cesarean, I'm prepared to accept that calmly and peacefully. I'm going to throw out a, a kind of a devil's advocate question. Yeah, yeah. Um, gently challenging. I'm wondering, like, in the past, 
mortalities for women who are giving birth are really, really high. We've gotten better yeah. through the medical advancements that we have where, yep. where women can go to an actual hospital, mm-hmm. get inundated, and handle that right. as safely as possible. Right. We learned a lot from that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you saying that if we had this hypno technology and just used that, we would see an equal drop in mortality? Or are there other good options to keep people healthy as they give birth? Right. So... Um, the rates of like infant mortality and in women mortality do I mean mother mortality yeah. um, have a lot to do with sterility yeah. and knowledge mm-hmm. uh, and so for example one thing that's really common um, in hospital births is a lot of hospitals will really check the woman's vagina and cervix mm-hmm. over and over and over again mm. once the membrane so um at the cervix, yeah, there is a membrane yep. that builds up throughout pregnancy to block off any bacteria yeah. being able to get into the uterus like to protect the baby. Yeah, right. Yeah. When you're in your birthing time, that membrane is gone. Mm-hmm. So then they start putting tools and hands and fingers and gloves and all the stuff into your vagina. Mm. Which, if you do that. Every time you do that, you're introducing more germs. And you're running the risk of infections and stuff like that. So if you can decrease, try to calm down, Mm -hmm. like the amount of times you're doing that, you're decreasing the amount of things that are being introduced. It sounds like, let me know if this is fair, even without going to the hospital, you've taken what you've learned from hospitals, such as like sterility. Yeah. And like, and it's, right. Hospitals, in my word, don't play like metal music or anything like that. They try to keep everyone calm too, right? Yeah. But you're taking the good things from as many sources as possible to do something with your choice. Which is exactly where I am. Um, I will, I'm planning on giving birth at St. Thomas mm. Hospital. Mm. So they have a birthing center that um, is like other people's birthing centers where you have a birthing ball you can sit on, you can walk around the room, you can do a lot of therapy, you're not strapped to a bed, you can have a tub, a shower. So you're in a controlled environment still, If anything were to happen, they bring your bed out and put you up one floor into the elevator and you're in the hospital. That's really cool. I didn't even know that was an option. I didn't either. So that, for me, like my friends had an amazing home birth lately. Like they killed it. It was wonderful. <laughs> they killed the baby. Yes. <laughs> it was fantastic. We, had, we gave we birth. We killed it. We sacrificed the baby to Lucifer, <laughs> and it was beautiful. No, they they did a great job. Okay. And, and every everybody was happy and healthy and perfect. Nice. Um, that's not for me. Okay. I um I don't want to do that. If you were asking me <laughs> from what. I've heard. Yeah. It sounds like you're taking the best of a lot of different situations within your comfort zone and trying to make this the least dramatic experience. But it's still going to be, how do I put this? It will be I'm a powerful. crier. I'm a crier. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a music video that I'll watch that makes me cry. It's a stupid music video too. It's not even sad. It's yeah. like some happy Japanese rock song thing. But when I watch it, I'm like, I'm touched. Yeah. Time to cry. Yeah. I imagine this will be a crying moment for a lot of people, just of like overwhelming emotions. Yes. And there's probably nothing. You, I can't imagine what you could do to prepare yourself for like, oh, I just made a person. No. Calm. Yeah. Respectful. Right. I accepted everything that happened. It's like, no, I'm going to be like, this is insane. Yeah. What yeah. do you do? Well, How do you, by the time you, the person is out, you you don't need to fight your uterus anymore. Yeah. You'll need to birth the placenta, but other than that, you're fine. Yeah. 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 All that gross stuff. Yeah. Oh, but an app is there. I really appreciate this talk. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cool. And that's basically it. Cool. Yeah? That's fun. Yo. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Wait, go for it then. Okay, so there's a cartoon called Street in the Universe. It's fantastic. It's a really cool show. It's unique in the sense that the main character becomes more complicated to the point where it's really, really hard to even explain. It's a little boy who's his mom, who's also... Uh, I don't know how far in the series you are, but he's also a intergalactic mm-hmm. queen who's also a rock. Mm-hmm. All in the same person. Yeah. And it... It, the show's about relationships, but it's just a question of, like, I've never seen this level of relationships in one show. The one thing that... So, I had all these clients keep telling me about it, keep talking about it. Really? Uh, yeah. I mean, um, especially people...